Hello friends and coffee lovers. Um, today it's time to finally make a video that I know a lot of you have been waiting for and asking about, and that is about our cart setup right here. So it's kind of behind me. This is how we stack everything inside there um, when we're like traveling to events because it's way easier to just wheel the cart with everything all together, machine on top um, to move around. But uh, I mostly have been delaying this video because first and foremost, as I've said in just about every video, you'll always, always want to reach out to your local health department before you start building, planning, anything. Every county is completely different. So an example of that is I'm in Michigan. Technically, all uh, carts, which are licenses like STFUs or campers, are they have the same qualifications um, for the whole state of Michigan, but in Washtenaw County, they will not inspect a cart like this. It has to be a fully enclosed trailer for them to even look at it. But one county over, Wayne County, will inspect things like that um, as like a kind of push cart operation. Some counties will require you to have a commissary, which is a place that you return every 24 hours. So after every event to store all your stuff, wash all your dishes, um, prep your syrups, anything like that you would need to do. Other counties don't require that. So everything is so circumstantial. So for this video, I really just wanted to focus on plumbing, uh, which is also not my forte. Um, I'll put a little clip here as to why I am not the plumbing expert. Um, I wouldn't say Brian or myself are like <laughs> experts at plumbing, but this is what we found that has worked for us so far. If you missed our last video talking about the bar, um, I talked a little more about like the actual build and how it folds in on itself. What I like about that is that we can pretty much use any car to like transport the bar because it breaks down so nicely and all of our equipment and everything we need fits like in these um, bins. So that's been super helpful. Uh, there are definitely like pros and cons between our camper and then having this cart. Obviously um, the cart is able to be set up indoor, which is really nice, really convenient. Um, but it is in some ways a bit more set up uh, with the camper towing is a huge thing and then our generator um it's obviously a lot more to bring somewhere but once we're set up and the generator's good everything's pretty much plug and play with this one we like fully set up and take down every time um and that can be a lot and plumbing always does freak me out just a little bit uh like what if it doesn't work uh where with the camper i pretty much know as long as the generator is going i can plug everything in and it should be fine um, because I'm not having to set up and take down every single time. So they definitely both have their pros and cons. Um, but yeah, in terms of like inspection, there are so many layers uh, that you kind of just have to do some digging. Okay, so this is an overview or plumbing. I'm gonna talk through it in a way that probably makes the most sense, which is like where we get the water, how it goes up to the machine, and then where it goes from there. Um, so, I'm gonna come over here first. Okay, so what we did was we basically screwed all of our plumbing devices onto this panel here, and then it Velcros to the back wall, just so we don't have to worry about that being damaged before we take the bar uh, apart or put it together. We just like have, pull that out so it's all safe. Um, so the way that it works, we have these five gallon jugs of drinking water. So we have a hose going in. Um, and this is technically, you could look up flow jet is like what you're gonna look up for that. Um, and then this is just like a five gallon jug uh, hose adapter basically. So it sits on top, sits on top. So this is our pump. Uh, so you turn this on, it's gonna pump water out of this jug the clean water up into here. So the water goes from the pump into this, which is our accumulator tank. So essentially the way that you can think about this is if you ever run your espresso machine off a pump only, um, when you turn it on or when you start pulling water, it'll kind of like go zzz, 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 and it'll pump on and off very quickly. 
which one can be bad for the machine, but also bad for the pump. The accumulator tank basically stops that from happening, stores pressure um, in here, stores water in there so that when it asks for water, it's all readily available. The pump doesn't have to work overtime. So water goes through the pump, through the accumulator, into these flexible hoses. And then the way that we have it set up is we have one shutoff valve down here so we can turn off water to the whole system. If there's a leak or something, we just flip this, um, turn it outward, and then no water will come through anymore. So from here, we have it teed off. The left side of the T goes over here. This is a quick disconnect. You don't really need one of those. It just allows us to pull this off the tubing really quick if we wanted to. But left side goes up into the water supply line. And this is just a typical threaded water supply line you're going to find for any uh, faucet. So if you go to Home Depot, just ask for a faucet supply line. That's going to go up into the machine and it's threaded on underneath. Um, pretty standard configuration for that. The other side of the T is this clear uh, like flexible hose again. And all that's doing is going up into our pitcher rinser. And then this is basically a uh, adapter from a threaded uh, receiver into this like clear supply line. Um, this is all going to be in the same section at Home Depot. It looks complicated, but it's all just push to connect. If you just look up push to connect, that's going to be all this stuff. So that gets started on here. We have another supply line um, that is going to go into our waistline or waste bucket. So all the water from the pitcher rinser drops into there. So the other thing to note, if you're doing push to connect, which you probably will be, is that these tubes all have to be the same size as the connectors. So if you look in here, we actually have a place where it changes. So I think this is eighth inch uh, tubing and it goes up into quarter inch tubing over here. So this is just an adapter to do that. Um, but the way these work is literally all of these white pieces are just connector fittings. So you literally take the tube and just push it in and that's, that's how it works. There's no threads or anything, so it's super nice. Um, in terms of drainage, on the A53, we don't have a direct plumb right now. So this is just a tray that comes out and we dump it when we need to. Need to. Um, but for longer term solution, we're gonna buy a drain kit. So the drain is essentially gonna come off the bottom of this, through the top with all of our other plumbing and just drain into our uh, gray water bucket here like everything else. Um, so that's how we're gonna do the drainage from that. One other thing to keep in mind is a lot of municipalities require an air gap for your drain lines. So all that means is that right now we have our drain line going directly into our bucket. Um, what an air gap would be is that this drain line would stop up here and then there's either a funnel or something to make sure it doesn't splash out, but it's not directly connected into the bucket. There's literally an air gap between the drain line and the uh, bucket it's going into. But again, that's going to depend on where you're building your cart. Okay, so this is essentially what kind of tubing you're going to buy for your, your push to connect fittings. It comes in different dimensions. Uh, it might take you a few trips to figure out what is what. Um, I would just recommend Googling it because the listings at the store are either inner dimension or outer dimensions. Um, so either the inside tube or the outside tube dimensions. And you just gotta make sure that they match up to your fittings. Um, but yeah, pretty much all this stuff can be bought at Home Depot, so it's not super scary. Thanks, Brian. One other detail that has been really helpful for me that I think I should point out is anytime we plug everything in plumbing wise uh, to get it all kind of jump started, I always just put something on top of the pitcher rinser and just like give it a little push down. That usually kicks the pump in a little more and has the water um, start filling like in the machine, flowing through the lines, all that jazz. So that's usually once I know everything's connected, my like go to, um, to just kind of get the water flowing. Um, if there are issues, the first thing I check is that everything's plugged in, of course, that the pump is on, um, cause sometimes it's not. And then the last thing is always just that little on off kind of toggle on the water lines to make sure it's open so that water can flow through correctly. Um, again, I'm sure there's like better, more efficient ways of doing this, but this has been working for us. Um, I know a lot, just about every county, you will be required to have some form of like a hand sink with a hot water heater. So that's something that we don't have plugged into the camper. All of the events that we serve um, are in places that do have access to 
like a kitchen. Um, I have seen carts get inspected with um, just using a kettle and like a bucket for gray water to go into. Um, and that has counted for some carts as a hand sink, but again, it really comes down to like your county and even sometimes what inspector you get. So a lot of it is just gonna be trial and error, reaching out to your health department, finding out what they require and seeing if it's even a feasible option for you at all to attend markets um, with a setup like this. So yeah, I wish I had like all the answers, but it's very much so like probably the hardest process of the business is just getting up and running and making sure you're following everything that your county requires and then once you get that initial inspection done everything after that really feels way more smooth.